Retain me. Give me a song. everybody god bless you god bless you please share this video invite somebody to watch Thank you, Margaret, for sharing. God bless you for sharing the video. Thank you for sharing, Gabriel. God bless you for sharing. Daniel Williams Blessings Don't, 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 don't. Facebook is gonna come block my this thing, mute my this. Let me. I'm trying to share and also play music. Let me play this music. Ah, um, my, 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 I don't know what to say. Um, my experience today, what I, oh, I don't know whether to say my spirit is down or to say I am, I'm short of words with what I heard. Hallelujah. If I have a little love, I will draw all men to my side. Let us lift our hands and lift Jesus up.
please share this video and invite somebody god bless you for sharing thank you daniel how are you sending to come God bless you, God bless you. Please share the video. My network is so slow, I don't know. I'm unable to share. Ah, oh, wow. Jesus. I feel like crying. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Ah, thank you, Jesus. 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 Ah. Can somebody worship the Lord? Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship Him. <sighs> worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. He's worthy. Let's begin to say thank you, Jesus. It's worthy to be praised. It's worthy to be adored. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. It's worthy. It's worthy to be praised. Jesus. At the mention of the name of Jesus. That's right. Ah, 
Jesus, you are me. Let's begin to shout Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Jesus, Jesus, you are lifted up. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. You are all welcome, 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 welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. I am short of words today. Hallelujah. You know, oh, I'm really short of words. In um, How many people, how many of you watched um, Pastor J. Israel? you know, unveiling, you know, falsehood in the body of Christ. How many of you, you know, he is doing it right now, but this is, is, is getting to the ending part. He's just answering question right now. You know, I, I, I thought that uh, I have, you know, encounter false prophet, but, you know, <laughs> there are certain levels that you, you, you you get to or you hear and you begin to wonder god what the children and what the body of christ is going through what the body of christ is going through right now you know the body of christ is really suffering from the hands of false prophets false and fake prophets false pastors fake pastors you know falsehood ah oh, why you know i'm really touched i'm really emotional about it because i'm happy that god you know make him to say all these things unveil all these things but i begin to think i'm like what about those people that they don't really have christ they are struggling and they are in the cage of all these false prophet, prophets. You know, <laughs> me, I was there and God delivered me. If not for the strong spirit that I have, I don't know. Maybe I will still be playing. I will still be, you know, deceived by it. all these false prophets and agents. But what about other people that they are just floating in their ministry? They don't know better. And they can't even pray. They cannot pray. They can't read their Bible. They don't know what to do. Even when somebody comes out and tells them, where you are, you, you are in the wrong place, they still don't believe. Oh my God. When I heard... J. Israel today. Oh my God. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Oh my God, it's very deep. It is deep. I was even thinking that his experience started with the South African thing. He, he was really, really deep in this. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What, why, why are men and women of God doing all of this? Is it, I, I asked questions, I said, is it to please man? Is it to please man? Or is it to, because of money? You mislead yourself, you mislead others. Wh why is it? Why? Why? I don't know, you know, why? Can somebody answer this question? Can somebody answer this question for me? Because right now, I'm really down. I am down. Okay, if me, as a woman of God, I have a message today, you know, I have a program that I'm supposed to do, which I am going to do. I am on it right now. Today is our third day for the 30 days deliverance. Then, me, as a woman of God, I'm this down. Not to talk of those people that they, they can't even pray. They cannot, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they will feel. Now I begin to understand, you know, when some people, when I started, I was exposing the false prophet that I got, you know, encountered with. You know, some people call me, some people text me and said, woman of God, I'm very depressed in what is going on. But you know what? This has to be done. This unveiling and exposure has to be done. If not, people will not be delivered. Do you guys know the level of falsehood that is going on in the body of Christ? Oh my God, witchcraft inside the church. Occultism inside the church. And they use the name of Jesus to cover it. And everybody, you go to church, you think that you always go and bow down. You go and worship. You are worshiping. And you feel like, oh, the spirit of God. Not knowing that is the spirit of the idol that is possessing you. And you see a lot of things happening in your life. Instead of good things to happen in your life, you keep seeing negative things. When you go there with one problem, you, are, you, you come back with 10, 20 problems. And you don't understand. You don't understand. Your pastor is progressing. Your pastor is buying cars, doing great things, but you are suffering. And the little money you have, the little $1, $10 you have, you are using it and sowing seed on your pastor to prosper the more. And they don't care. Because the devil has stolen their hearts. They don't have human hearts anymore. Whatever they are doing, they don't have passion for human being. They don't care whether you are crying. They don't care whether you are suffering. The little you have, they collect it from you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ must be cleaned. Let Jesus come and clean the, his house. He has started already. He has started. And I thank God that I am part of this movement. That is why I don't care. Even if I come here, come on this platform, and it's only one person watching me, I'm satisfied with one person. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about crowd. Before I used to like, oh, how many people is watching me? I don't, let them go, let them go. You can go to anywhere and watch whichever false prophet you want to watch. I don't care. Man. And you see people, they are going for those crowd. Crowd that you don't even feel the power of God. There is no power of God. There is no presence of God. You and you know very well that there is no presence of God. You know, but you just don't, you just cannot do anything about it. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. I wanted to come on live. I don't know what I, you know, I was going to come on live. I just came in contact with his video. I said, let me just watch him for one minute. 
then come on life. Only I heard, oh my God, he, he was unveiling a lot of things. Men of God. He, they are men of God with little G, not, not my almighty God. Men of God and women of God. What they can do. Using children, babies as sacrifice. There was a time I was doing fasting behind the scene. I could remember for those people that are, they are, you are my prayer warrior group behind the scene. One of one 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 of, one person said, "Woman of God, I am, I am menstruating. I am bleeding. And uh, is it okay for me to fast?" I'm like, "Why wouldn't you fast when you are? Why wouldn't you fast when you are menstruating? Menstruation is part of your system, your body system." You know, because there are some churches that when you are a woman, you are menstruating, you can, there are certain things you don't do in the church. Those kind of churches are occultic. Why will you tell me because I'm menstruating? This is normal process of life that I'm doing as a woman. Oh, I, you, I cannot preach. I cannot sing. I cannot fast. I cannot do that because there are spiritual implication my sisters my brothers please shine your eye 2020 is a is a is a year of clear vision vision 2020 your right side is open your left side is open and clear and even with all of this even with all of these there are still people that are doubting no it can't be because that, those people that does that, they are cultists. I did teaching about cultists. If you have not watched that video, go back and watch it. Oh my God. Father Lord, deliver your church. Deliver your church. You see people, they pay flight tickets. I know a lot of people on this on my platform here. They have paid flight tickets to TB Joshua, to uh, churches in different cho places. In different countries, they spend money. And these are people that they are not even working. They don't have money. They will even borrow money and go and pay. I, I'm just using uh, that as an example. I'm not saying, did you hear me that I said TB Joshua is false? No. I didn't say that. But let the discernment of spirit in you, the spirit of God in you, tell you who is who. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Discovering myself. I'm so... Ah. And, and, and you know that the, the, the topic of my message today is recovering. Is it recovering or discovering? Yeah. Recovering myself. You know, I'm like... I, I'm like, thank God I got this topic before I watched that, um, uh, that confession because... I wouldn't have known what to even preach today. Because I'm I, I'm really, oh my God. I want somebody to say, oh God, deliver me from the hands of false prophets. Every false prophet I have come in contact with, the ones that have prayed for me, the ones that have laid hands on me, transferred demons, the ones that I have gone to their church, the one I went to visit, uh, the ones through my friends I went and visit, uh, the ones through baby dedication and through baby, uh, 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 baby naming ceremony, through wedding I went to unknowingly. Oh God, deliver me from the hands of false prophets. Deliver me from the hands of false prophets. Some of us, we sometimes there is there are things that we used to say. We will say, "Hey, God, judge me! Oh, if I have ever gone to bow down to any wish doctor, I have ever gone to God, judge me. Let your punishment be. You don't know that indirectly you have gone to bow down to wish doctors. That church that you are going, who is the head?" He's a witch doctor. He is an occultic person. And you are here trying to justify yourself. God, you know. God, help me. You know I've not been to a witch doctor before. That pastor that you are following is a witch doctor. And that is why all the prayer you have been praying, no answer. Because you, are, you already judge yourself. You ask God to judge you. God, look at me. Oh, since I was born, I have not been to a juju priest's house. I have not been to a, an occultic house. I have not been to this. 
But do you know where that your pastor, that church that you are going through to, do you know what is under the pulpit? Do you know what is under the, 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 the altar that you will go and dance? You go and dance and put your offering. Do you go there and bow down your head? You don't know what you are bowing down head for. My God. My God. My God. A lot of things that people are going through in life is as a result of churches that we go to. Do you know what that pastor? And a lot of what is going on, the trend that is going on now. If your church is not full, if you, your church is not full, you can't have more members. People don't want to come and... If you preach the undiluted word of God, nobody comes to your place. Look at this platform now. Look at the platform now. In On this side, I have 23. This side, I have 11. Go to those false prophets, those ones that are using something to prophesy and lie on you and cast spell on you. You will see 1,000 people, 2,000 people, 500 people, 100 people, one... They are there saying, Amen, 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 Amen. A juju priest is casting spell on you. And you are saying, Amen, Amen. And you want your life to change. There is no way your life can change. It cannot change. That is why the, you are going through, you are still the way you are. Ah, you say, oh God, look at me. From the day I was born, my mother have not taken me to the house of a juju priest. Huh? My father have not taken me to the house of a juju priest. Since I was born, I've not been to a juju priest house, a witch doctor. I've not been there. I've not bowed down. God judge me. Huh? If I have ever gone to a juju priest, a witch doctor, Father, don't answer my prayer. Yes, God will not answer your prayer. You know why? Because even the church that you are, even the church that you are, <laughs> you are, is a juju, is a shrine. That altar is a shrine. Some of you, God have shown you. Some of you, God have shown you in your dreams that where you are is a shrine, but you don't want to believe. You don't want to believe. Let me tell you, there was a time. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus, help me. We women, hey, you guys need to really pray very hard. I now remember something. There is this pastor that wanted to marry me. Hey, Jesus. When this pastor wanted to marry me. And, he, he, you know, I went and meet him in Nigeria. He's, he's based in South Africa. So we started a relationship. Do you know that? All the time. Hey, Jesus. You know, I'm just remembering all these things now. Father, Lord, deliver us from the ends of false prophet. Oh, I want you guys. Hey, this is serious matter. Oh. This is serious matter. Do you know how many of your destinies, how many of your blessings that all these false prophets have stolen? Hey, Jesus. Ha. Huh. I said, this pastor, he says he's pastor. Hey, hey, my friend, yeah, he's here. Dr. Leo, <laughs> he knows who I'm about to talk about. <laughs> this pastor, fake pastor, Jesus Christ, he wanted to marry me. I went to Nigeria and met him. We did our covenant of marriage. Hey, Jesus. Every time when I am here, I would dream. There was a time I had a dream. The first time I started dreaming about this man, in the dream, I would see him smoking cigarettes in the dream. I would see him smoking cigarettes in the dream. Then I said, ah. I said, how can a pastor be smoking? And in that dream, when I saw him, I'm like, um, I'm like, I will call him. I will say, ah, do you smoke? He will say, no, I don't smoke. I'm like, you don't smoke. But why am I? I saw him three times in the dream. Three times in the dream. I said, but why am I always seeing you in my dream? You are smoking. And anytime you see me in that dream, you go and hide. You go and hide and hide the, uh, the cigarettes. 
He said, oh, maybe God, you know, my weakness is anger. So, you know, anger is smoke. You know, when in the spirit realm, when somebody is angry, eh, you will see the person smoking cigarettes. I'm like, ah, you need to take care of this, your anger. Why should I be seeing uh, you, dream, you know, all the time smoking in your dream? And you say you are a pastor. Why should you be dealing with uh, You need to deal with this, your anger, so, uh, anger, anger problem, oh, so that I don't dream of you. My dear, it didn't stop there. It did not stop there. I now went, that, I think that was like an elementary, elementary revelation. Then God now moved me from there. So another level of revelation about this man. I started dreaming again. I now dreamt of him. I saw, I saw him. He was wearing red. You know this juju priest. You know all these occultic people where they will not wear anything on their body, but they will tie red wrapper, uh, like red wrapper. Then they will put this white thing on their face. On their face, then they will put on some kind. Then they will have this bag. I saw him; he was dressed like that in that dream. And when I saw him, it I, I saw him real clearly. Then, in that dream, I now saw that I had a voice of a woman. The woman was telling him, "It's time for you to go. You need to go." Then I saw this man; he was going straight. In the air, he was going up, up. I stood, and somebody called his name. The voice of that woman, that woman voice called his name. And he, he started floating in the air and was going with the way he was dressed. Hey, I was so scared. I woke up. And guess what? This type of people, when you see them, I get more confused. When I woke up, the first person that called me, he was the one. And he started praying. He was praying. He said, we need to do prayers now. We need to do prayers. This day. Then I was confused in my dream. And I, I, I'm like, why would I see this man with this juju occultic dressing going up in the air? And now he's the one calling me and telling me. I said, devil, you are a liar. I started doubting what God was showing me. I said, devil, you are a liar. You are a bastard. You want to, you, you want to, uh, uh, you know, disguise my, my fiance so that I don't marry. You do, you don't want me to be married. I reject you. Hey, that, uh, that, uh, my family, the witches in my family that is chasing me. You don't want me to marry. Holy Ghost fire. I started praying, you know. Then one, I saw him like that, dressed like that. The first one I saw him, he was going up. The second one, I saw him like in the forest. Then the second time, I could not hold it again. I now called him. I said, I didn't tell him exact dream that I had. So I used indirectly. I now told him, I said, um, I saw you. When I saw you, you were wearing dread, red. I told him, you were wearing red. I said, be careful. Though. Are you doing occultic? occultic things or you are following occultic people then he said you saw me wearing red which other thing did you see on me in my spirit i said no i'm not going to tell him because if i tell him <laughs> i don't know what how he's going to feel then i now said no i just saw you wearing red and i saw you going up 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 oh he now said oh is that what you saw okay 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 you, you know that our uh, communion service I said, yes, we just did communion service. He said, uh, hey, that is the blood of Jesus now. I was wearing the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> ah. Wickedness in high places. These occultic people, they know how to manipulate. And if they know that you know them in the spirit realm, they will do everything to eliminate you or to block themselves. So he said that was blood of Jesus now. God is trying to show you, you know, you saw me, I was going up. And, you know, you saw me wearing red. That means that is blood of Jesus. You know, and, you know, that is to tell you that God accepted that communion that we did in the, in the church. I'm like, blood of Jesus. This man doesn't know that. It's not just ordinary red I saw. I saw him wear, dressed like a juju priest. How can he connect blood of Jesus to a juju priest with all the mark on his face? I said, hmm. Then the last one, okay. Before I now saw the last one that now motivated me, I cursed him out and I break up the relationship. So one day, 
The, meanwhile, this man used to bring me the, the way he will bring me down, bully me. He will say, "You, you, you cannot preach. You cannot." If I tell him, "Okay, can I pray for my people?" The thing he used to do is, he would declare fasting. He will ask me to always pray for people. And when I pray for people, things will be happening in the life of those people. But he himself, he will not pray for people. Though. He will do the preaching, do everything, collect money. But he will not pray. He will, say, he will ask them to come, always come to me for prayers. And I will be doing the praying. I will be first in praying here and everything. And God, you know, was answering my prayer. So one day. He was preaching about gifts and all of that. Then after that preaching, I now asked him, I said, you know, as if I didn't know, I said, what kind of gifts do I have? What type of gifts? Yeah, because, uh, you know, I know that I used to prophesy when I was little. And when I grow up, I, I, I see things a lot in the, this thing. But you tell me, you say you are a prophet. You tell me, what do you see? <laughs> you know what he told me? He said, with the kind of way that you see things in the spirit realm. I say, how do you know I see things in the spirit? He said, ha, you. I know you very well. The way you see things in the spirit realm. You are a, you are, you are a prophet. So you don't know you are a prophet. You see things and a lot of things that you see, is, is they are real. You know, that the time it was he was telling me this, I did not understand. I didn't, I didn't connect it at all. Then the last day. That really breaks the camel back. I now, I now slept. I now went into the spirit realm. In my dream. I now went to a house. I saw myself in a house. There were different rooms in that house. Then in that different rooms. I now opened one of the doors. When I opened the door, one of the doors. I saw like one part of the. One part of. I saw him. He was sitting. He was backing the door, but he was sitting and was with another elderly man. The, and that elderly man, they were speaking in Igbo language. They were speaking in their language. I, I didn't understand. I, I don't understand the language. So they were saying, oh, bro, bro, bro. you know, like speaking in their language. And I now saw a coffin, a coffin on the ground was lying there was somebody in that coffin but i don't because i did not go inside i didn't see the face of the person then i now turn my face and look to my right on the wall there was black one part of the wall was black one part of the wall was red and there was a table like a shrine a shrine table a lot of fetish thing was there so me when i saw it i now open i now open my eyes i i now uh, uh, they didn't manipulate my dream i saw the real thing so i now like what oh my god i look at it when i i, I look at it i now saw i saw him i'm like why is this man in this place in this room what is he doing in this room? So I kept quiet. I could not. I was shaking at the door. I was shaking. So the way I was shaking, my hand now hit the door in that dream. He hit the door. Then he now turned his face and saw me. As soon as he saw me, he said, damn. He started chasing me in that dream. He was chasing me, chasing me, chasing me. I ran. I ran till I woke up. When I now woke up, I now said, I said, Jesus. Oh God, does it mean that this man is really occultic? No, 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 no. It's not occultic. It, the devil, you are a liar. Hey, devil, you want to take my husband from me? <laughs> the man that wants to marry me. You want... Guess what? I saw a coffin with somebody. Do you know the next day? Do you know this man called me and told me that his sister died? Immediately he said it. Bam! My mind just went to the dream I had, uh, uh, like, that is not even up to 24 hours. Then, I told him, uh -uh, you never told me your sister is sick. How come she is dead? Then he said, oh, look, oh, even, that is not even the end, though. They are saying, my family and the village people, they say, I'm the one that killed my sister. Then I said, uh -uh, how can they say you are the one that killed your sister? And you are a pastor. 
what is going on? He said, no, because yesterday, you know, yesterday I went, I said, I don't know anything. He said, I went to, I went to my village with my spiritual father. And um, I went and prayed for my sister. My sister is a teacher. I went and prayed for my spiritual father. When I am uh, with my spiritual father, we went, the only person we saw in my compound was my sister. And we prayed and I gave her a, a white handkerchief. And when I came back, the next day, uh, it's not even up to 24 hours, my, uh, my sister died. I'm like, but you didn't tell me you were going to your village. You did not tell me you are going to your village. My goodness, that was when I started. And I did not tell him that dream. I didn't tell him the dream. That is how I ran 440. I ran Ben Johnson. I ran, I did not look back. Could you imagine? Do you even know how many false prophets? These people are not just fake. They have spiritual powers. If you guys have watched my videos, go, if you have not watched my videos on exposing false prophets, the teachings I did, if you have not watched it, please go and watch those videos. I have, I think, up to part four of part five. Make sure you watch it. Watch it. That is going to help you identify false prophet. It will help you identify them. It will let you know when you see a false prophet, you will know. You will say, ah, this one is a false prophet. If you have not watched those videos, go back and watch them. Exposing false prophets. How they operate. These people have strong spirit. If it is fake prophet, it's okay. Fake prophet, I'm not saying it's okay. Fake prophet, what they do is they will only, they will only deceive you. They will deceive you. They can do. Uh, they can fake and uh, have somebody pay somebody to come and sit on a wheelchair, and they will. They they, they will say. Uh, they will now pray and pray and pray, and the person will stand up and say, "I'm healed." Those are fake. Eh? They are not going to harm you spiritually. The only thing is, they they are full of lies. They will lie lie to you, lie and lie and lie. But when it comes to false prophets, false prophets they have another power, spiritual power. They have strong spirits. They, they can harm you, they put you, they hypnotize you, they can do everything that they want to do. Bayo, you are welcome. So, they can manipulate, they can do anything. False prophets. Could you imagine where you would have been in life now? And you know that you have worked so hard. To get to where you are supposed to be. But you just cannot get there. Because you are connected to a false prophet. Because the church that you are going every Sunday. You go and, eh, eh, and you bow down your head. You say you are worship. We bow down and worship. Yahweh. You don't know that you are. We bow down and worship. Babalawo. We bow down and worship. Wish doctor. We bow down and worship. Juju priest. Could you imagine going to church every Sunday or even having an online service with somebody, with somebody that is operating with witchcraft spirit, marine spirit, occultic spirit, a kingdom of darkness spirit, a devilish spirit, and all the time you are praying with that person, you are praying, you are saying, oh Lord, thank you Jesus, I worship you Lord, I worship her, and you expect God to answer your prayer, that is why our prayer, the Bible says, do you think that my heart, Ears are too deaf, my hands are too short for that, and my eyes cannot see what you are going through for me to answer your prayer. It's because something is wrong somewhere. What is that thing that is wrong somewhere? Check yourself and check the pastor that you are following, check yourself and check the altar that you are bowing down your head, check yourself and check where you are always worshiping. God is a miracle working God. My goodness. Some people, you go to a church. 
Things that is never heard of before in life. You begin to feel something walking inside your body. From the day you went to a church, oh, or from the day a pastor lay hands on your, on, your, on your body, on your head, you will feel something moving in your body. They keep that dear. They know that, okay, this one, with this thing going on in his life, that is it. He's not going to go anywhere. I got her, or I got him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree so that you will increase in today's ministration. As we are getting into another level of ministration this moment, I want you to show yourself as Lord and King. Let these people not see me. Let them see you. Let them see you in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak through me and minister life into the life of your children. Whoever that is under the spell or bondage, of a, a witch doctor, a, 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 a false prophet, Father Lord, deliver them today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open their eyes. Let them see you and you alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for you are a good God. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Everybody, please share this video. Share. I'm getting to another level. That our topic for today's message is recovering myself recovering myself i see that god is delivering somebody god is in the see right now with what is going on in the body of christ even if it's only two people two people that i can affect and touch their lives i am okay at lo as long as i will me i will make heaven and those two people will make heaven i am okay ah what is going on in the body of christ Let's open the book of, let, let's go to the book of 2 Kings chapter 6, from verse 1 to 7. That is where I'm taking our message from. 2 Kings chapter 6, from verse 1 to 7. Can somebody type it for me? Hallelujah. Recovering myself. Some of you, you have lost yourself. Some of you, you have lost yourself. You've lost your sanity. You have lost your, 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 your dignity. You have lost. You don't know where you lost yourself. You don't know where you lost yourself. Some of you, you went to a church from the moment you went to that church. You lost everything about yourself. You don't recognize yourself. You don't know yourself. That from that moment, everywhere that is wrong, you keep finding yourself where it is wrong. And you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. No changes. Thank you, Nephia. Thank you, Nephia. A lot of you have lost yourself. You lost yourself. You, can, you don't trust yourself anymore. Some of you are just living. You just live for living's sake. You don't trust yourself anymore. You, some of you, you lost hope. You have lost your marriage. Some of you have lost your job. You lost your destiny. You lost your career. You lost your ministry. You lost your gift. Today, if you are among these people, you are going to discover yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. I said today is your day of recovery. Wherever, hey, hey, I said wherever your half is, God is going to use your half, what is remaining in you, to locate what is lost in you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that was lost in you, I speak into your life huh, that you are going to recover it again. Huh? You are going to get yourself back to normal huh? in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Huh? Today is your day of recovery. Huh? The Bible says, huh, and you shall know the truth. Huh? And it is the truth that you know huh? is what will set you free. I want somebody to say, I am recovering myself today. I am recovering myself today. I am recovering myself today. I want somebody to type it. Huh? Say, I am recovering myself today. Huh? I am recovering myself today. 
a lot of things is going to be revealed. Without, rev revela without revelation, there is no recovery. If you don't know, if you don't acknowledge where you are, you, there is no way you will be able to move and be recovered. Today is somebody's day of recovery. I said today, huh? somebody is going to be recovered today. Huh? I said somebody is about to be recovered today. Huh? I said somebody is about to be recovered today. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. I said receive your recovery in Jesus name. I pray. If something, let me tell you, recovery come as a result of losing <laughs> is there anybody here <laughs> you have lost lost something in your life what is that thing that you have lost <laughs> what is that thing that you have lost in your life <laughs> have you lost your health <laughs> have you lost your job <laughs> you lost your children <laughs> you lost your relationship <laughs> you lost your status <laughs> you lost your education <laughs> you lost your ministry <laughs> i said today <laughs> is your day of recovery <laughs> in the name of jesus christ <laughs> what is left inside of you <laughs> is gonna bring about your recovery <laughs> what is left in you right now huh? for you to still be alive till today huh? will bring about your recovery huh? in the name of Jesus Christ amen recovering myself recovering myself Hmm. Somebody, I see somebody. Uh, somebody is shaking his or herself right now. Uh, you are shaking yourself, getting yourself. Uh, you are recovering yourself already. Uh, even before I start preaching, uh, you have started recovering yourself. Uh, I say receive your recovery uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, receive your recovery uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, receive your recovery uh, in Jesus' name, I pray. Recovering myself. I'm going to read. I'm going to read 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1. I'm only taking 1 to 7. It says, And the sons of the prophets said, said to Elijah, The sons of the prophets said to Eli Elisha, I mean, Elisha, do you, do you all know who a Prophet Elisha was? Prophet, prophet Elisha was the one that served that was the one that took double portion of anointing from Elijah. If you are a Christian, if you don't know Elijah, at this your level of Christianity, you will need to come for Bible studies so that uh, you know about Prophet Eli Elijah. So Elisha served under Elisha and they were both prophets. So see what happened. So the children of Elisha, they don't say to Elisha, see now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. <laughs> there are some of you, let me tell you, let me tell you, everybody needs a prophet in their life. Who is your prophet? That is why you see the devil. The devil knows that everybody needs a prophet. Somebody that will go inside. Huh? Somebody that will see deep things about you. The devil knows about that. That is why he now release millions of false prophets to go and take over the world. The devil knows that everybody needs false prophets. Every, I'm sorry. Everybody needs a prophet. Who is your prophet? That person that will sit down and dream about you and tell you. That person that will go in depth and pray up for you. Pray for you. That person that will see things. Huh? He is praying and the Lord drops something and say, pray for this person. Or tell this person to do this, to do this. He's your prophet. That is why the devil also used that means huh? to scam people. And that is why you see yourself running, of, running after prophets. You are following a prophet 
have you really got it? When you meet with your prophet, the day you meet with your prophet, your God will pass through your prophet and change things in your life. That is why you yourself, you have to be a prophet to yourself first. Before, because if you yourself, you are not a prophet to yourself. How do would you be able, go and watch my pre previous video, you, you understand what I'm saying. If you cannot prophesy to yourself, you, if you cannot foretell, do a foretelling to yourself. How can you know when somebody is foretelling falsely to you? There is no way you can know. Remember, I taught you guys that there is foretelling and there is foretelling. Foretelling is the one you prophesy into your life. Then foretelling is the one that another person prophesies unto you. If you don't know yourself, how can you know a real and a true prophet of the Almighty God? There are a lot of false prophets out there. But I want to tell you that today, after today's ministration, huh, your life can never remain the same. Huh? I say after today's ministration, huh, yo, you are going to recover yourself. Huh? And everything that you have lost, huh, you are going to recover. Huh? You will recover. Huh? You will pursue. Huh? You will pursue. Huh? You will pursue. Huh? You will overtake. Huh? And you will recover everything huh, that the devil has stolen from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The children of prophet Elisha, they told him, Daddy, our, we are too big for this little space. <laughs> we want to enlarge our territory. <laughs> there are some of you. <laughs> there are some of you. You are due for, you are due for enlargement. But why are you not enlarging your territory? Because you have a wrong prophet in your life. You cannot enlarge your territory because of a wrong prophet, a false prophet that you, you have taken. You thought that, okay, let me do the word of God. I need a prophet in my life. Then you went and fall into the hands of a wrong prophet. Anytime, let me tell you, when you fall into the hands of a false prophet, let me tell you, know that, that your time of enlargement has come. And when you fall into the hands of a true prophet of God, know that your time of enlargement has come. So how do you differentiate so that you will follow the true prophet of God instead of a false prophet of God. The Bible says by their fruits ye shall know them. Test the spirit. I know a lot of people don't know how to test the spirit. A lot of people they are like um okay, discernment of spirit. Discernment of spirit is not about just saying it. It's about knowing how to descend spirits. How do you know who has the true spirit? Let me tell you. The devil have, does not have any good thing to offer. If you want to really know the true prophet of God, go and watch my videos. You will know them. As you are watching the video, you begin to you know it. But I'm just going to just breathe because that is not what I am here for today. The, one of the most things that will help you through discernment of spirit to know a true and a false prophet of a, a true prophet of God and a false prophet is through their fruits. What are the fruits? The number one major thing. Some of these false prophets they know how to preach too, but their character. Ask God to open your eyes in the spirit and when you sleep. Their character in the spirit realm and their character in the physical. Some of these false prophets, they are full of anger. Some of them, they cannot control themselves. Those are the people that sleeps. Sexual immorality. They lie. They are wicked. 
You see the wicked. You see some people. You are following somebody that is very wicked, but you don't just don't know. You ju you just like it the way it's wicked. Check yourself. You you yourself. Check yourself. So the children of Elisha, they were due for enlargement. And they said, Papa, we want to get out of this place because this place is too small for us. We need to enlarge our course. Huh? And when you are about to enlarge your course, huh, you need the Bible. It see, when you are given a vision of enlargement, there is always a provision that goes with it. God cannot give you a vision without a provision. There is always a provision that goes with vision. And the children of Elisha was given a provision for their vision of enlargement. Uh, and they took, look at what the Bible says. Uh, it says, see now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Verse 2 now says, uh, please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there. Every man take a beam from there. That is the provision. Okay. Take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, go. The children of Elisha said, Papa, let us go. We are due. Uh, please, can you release us? Let us go and make, you know, a bigger place for ourselves because we are due for prosperity. We are due, due, due to have children. We are due to go to school and graduate. We are due for all of this thing to have our own ministry. And Elisha told them, go. See what happened. A lot of you, you've... You've, you are due. You have been due for enlargement. You have been due to move to another level in your life. And you are set to go. You God gave you the provision to move on. And what happens? Something happened along the road. Something happened along the way. What is that thing that happened? In your own case. Where you knew that there was, there was a, 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 a enlargement. You were due for enlargement. You were due to be en to to have enlargement of territory. You were due for promotion. You were due to have a a, a a wife. You or a husband. You were due to have children. You were due to have your own ministry. You were due to have your own album. You were due to have your own movie. You were due to have your own house. You were due, and you were given all the provision that will help you carry out this vision. But look at yourself now. Look at where you are. After this promotion, you have been promoted. Now, to work in your promotion, what is going on? Why are you not working in your promotion? Why are you not where you are supposed to be? Because you said that, prophet, huh? Papa, I am due for promotion. Let me go. And you have been given the go-ahead. And the pro provision has been given to you. What is wrong along the line? Why are you not where you are supposed to be? I want somebody to open your mouth. Open your mouth and say, Oh God, ha, why am I where I am? Ha? Oh God, take me to my destination. Ha. Take me to my destination. Ha. Help me to recover myself. Ha. Take me to my destination. Ha. Somebody is about ha, to recover his or herself. Ha. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray. Do that prayer. One second. Do that prayer. I'm coming. Help me, help me, help me. Help me. Help me, oh God. Help me to recover myself. Help me, oh Lord. Help me to recover myself. Help me to recover myself. Makakabo Shegelabaha. Radabako se gele de boshilabaha. Rangabako shekelebaha. Help me to recover myself. Help me, Lord. Somebody is not praying. Somebody is not praying. Somebody is not praying. I say, open your mouth and say, Oh God, help me to recover myself. Help me to recover myself. Help me, help me, oh God. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God, to recover myself. In the name of Jesus Christ. Makabako 
App me, oh Lord. Makabe ke sheki la kakabaka. Marege de bo shege le baburi kabako shiki la baha. Help me, O oh Lord, to recover myself. Maleke shake lava. See what the children of Elisha did. See what they did. See what the children of Elisha did. They were given the provision. And their father Elisha told them, Go. I bless you. Go with my blessing. Verse 3 now said, Then one said, Please. Consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. They did not only leave Elisha, but they went. They didn't only go from there, but they were left there with Elisha. They said, can you please follow us? Because they knew that they needed a prophet. They, they knew that there might be a red sea on the road. Uh, there might be a storm on the way that they would need a prophet to speak into that storm for the storm to stop. They said, prophet, please, can you speak? Can you come with us? We will need you. It's not, you don't need a prophet physically. You need somebody that wherever you are, the person can speak into your life and things begin to happen. Not somebody that will be lying to you and scamming money out of you. Scavenge, scav, scavenging money from you. Marabakashilaba. And Elisha said, okay, I will go with you guys. Your, your wish is my command. I'm going to go with you. I will go with you. Look at what verse 4 says. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. Remember, they cut down trees. See what happened. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe edge fell into the water. Hey! That is a destiny that has been paused. As he, they were cutting the tree, the acts that they collected, they were borrowed in. They borrowed them. See, who among you, you want you, we wanted to start a business. In the middle of your business, the business cutter. Some of you, you were in the middle of marriage. You could not, your, your, your wife was pregnant, there was miscarriage. Who is that person? In the middle of your mission, in the middle of your mission, something from nowhere hit and it got terminated. I say today, you are going to recover yourself in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The only thing that you need is a true prophet of God to speak into your life and things begin to change. Or are you not tired of following a wrong prophet that, does, that is not connected to your destiny? Are you not tired? See what's happened here. Look at what happened. Hey, <laughs> but as one was calling down a tree, the iron axe edge fell into the water and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. What is that thing that you have lost? What is that thing you have lost in the process of your destiny, Johnny? What is that thing you've lost in the process of you making it in life? Try to struggle. Huh? Some of you, you have near success syndrome. Huh? Anytime you are about to get to the, uh, to, 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 the, to the verge of your breakthrough, something from nowhere will just happen and scatter everything. There are some of you that uh, when you gather money, you want to do, you have a project in mind. You will gather money, gather money. As soon as that money is about to complete, you are about to do the last putting in that money for you to carry out that project. You will receive a call from back home or from a friend or from a, very, a family member that saying that, oh, I have this problem. It's a do or die 
problem and they will mention the amount of the problem will be the exact amount that you have saved and guess what guess what you will carry it and give it to the person there was a time i you know when i i used to do counseling in my in the church here some people will come and say woman of god i cannot gather my money this 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 any time i gather my money i want to use it to do my project they will always call me somebody will always call me i told them that this is not of the lord and there is something he said the person said he said hey, but you know woman of god i thank god that any time that i gather this money hmm? any time i gather this money and people call me for help i thank god i have the money to give to them for the help i see he said i know it is it is god that is doing it i say it's not god i told them it is not of the lord anytime you gather money for projects and at the end of that uh, gathering of the money another thing from nowhere just come and pick the money from you snatch the money away from you and you cannot that is delay that is setback that is limitation it is programmed in the spirit realm how many of you anytime you want to do something at the verge of doing that thing from nowhere something will just come and disrupt you how many of you here if you are the one i want you to comment because god is about to break that that yoke that yoke of limitation and setback god is about to break it right now I release the fire of Holy Ghost huh, to break every foundation of setback, huh, foundation of near success syndrome in your life. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. And this brother said, Woman of God, I thank God, though. At least I have money to solve their problem. I said, That money was not meant to solve that problem. It is because it is being projected in the spirit realm. It's been projected in the spirit realm. That is why it's like that. That spirit that does not want you to make it in life. That spirit that doesn't want you to progress. But I speak into your life right now the two platform huh? i speak into your life huh? every demon of near success syndrome every demon of miscarriage huh? every demon of death huh? every demon of loss of relationship every demon of sickness huh? every demon of loss of job huh? every demon of pull him or her down huh? i command it to die in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, let it be destroyed. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I dismantle it from your life. Uh, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I want somebody to say, I am recovering myself. I am recovering myself. Somebody say, I am recovering myself. I'm recovering myself. If you are sitting down, I want you to stand up and shake yourself. Say today, from today, I am recovering myself. If you cannot stand up, huh, it's even if you are sitting down, shake yourself like this and say, today, huh, I have known the truth. Huh? I'm recovering myself huh? in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? I am discovering myself huh? in the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? I am discovering myself in Jesus' name. Recovering myself. There is somebody here under the sound of my voice. You like to tell lies. The Spirit of the Lord is saying that you need to quit from lies. Because there is a lie that you are about to lie that is going to put you in a big trouble. You need to stop. Stop. Don't tell that lies. Don't tell that lies. You always like to lie. 
You always like to lie. Today, the Spirit of God is saying that uh, you need to stop. Don't do that. Don't lie. Don't lie that. That lie. Say the truth. It is when you say that truth, they will, they, that thing that you want to lie for, to avoid, when you say the truth, you are going to be free and you will get what you are expecting in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't lie. That is the message that I just got right now. There is somebody here. Somebody here. You like to lie. To cover up, to cover up things. You like to lie. To, 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 to make things happen in your life. And there is another lie you are about to lie. There is a lie you want to lie. That lie, you are not going to escape it. If you tell that lie. The spirit of the Lord is warning you. Don't lie. Say the truth about that situation and you are going to see things is going to change in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at what the Bible says here. It says, But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. What of which of your axe head is lost in the process of you, in the process of your destiny journey? Which of your axe head is missing? Which of your axe head is missing? Some of you, you were about, you went to a foreign land. Up to today, you cannot get your status together. Your axe edge was missing. In the process of you accomplishing your status. Some of you, you are married. <laughs> Everything you went for in that marriage, which is children and prosperity, you can't get it. Your axe edge got missing in the middle of your marriage. Some of you, you are working. No promotion because your ass aid is missing. Some of you, <laughs> you have, you don't have a good health because your ass aid is missing. <laughs> Some of you, <laughs> you lost your relationship many times because your ass aid is missing in the midst of you trying to get married. Some of you, your axe head is missing in your business and your career because as you were trying to make it get better, I want to tell you, what is that axe head? What is your axe head that is missing? What is your axe head that you drop in the water? What is that axe head? God is about to take the half of you right now to restore it back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. But guess what? You need a prophet, a true prophet of God. I see somebody here. You always like going to false prophets because you, all, you only want to hear the prophecy. Even though the prophecy is not making any changes in your life, even though the prophecy is not doing anything, you just get excited about it. I want to tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, refrain from false prophets so that your miracle can be released unto you. Some of you, you are the one that is holding your miracle because you refuse to stay away from false prophets. Even when God has revealed them to you, you still do not want to. God is about to give you your second half, which is the axe age. Look at what happened. He said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, so the man of God, did you see what the Bible wrote? God, the man of God, with a big G, a capital G, not with a small G. So the man of God. 
I speak as a woman of God into your life that every axe edge, every part of you that you are missing, begin to recover it right now. I say recover it in the name of Jesus Christ. Recover your half in the name of Jesus Christ. And the man of God <laughs> said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in there. And he made the iron flute. Therefore he said, pick it up for yourself. For he reached out his hand and took it. He, he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick. <laughs> Somebody is about to discover his second half. <laughs> Do you know how the axe? Axe. You know what an axe is. You know every axe. They have the handle. The handle of a, the axe is a stick. Handle of a axe is a stick. Then the edge is the axe edge. The sharp one that you use to cut the tree. Okay. The edge went into water and disappeared. It takes the half of the head for the axe head to come out. Malaba. That is very deep. In the eyes of human, it doesn't make sense. Because the axe head is heavier than the stick itself. How come... The stick itself, the handle, will have to go and pull out the hedge. Every of your axe head that was missing, today recover it. I said today you are going to locate it. He's coming back to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Marabakoshelaba. You see the mystery? Only a true prophet of God can see the mysteries and know the mysteries of the word of God. A false prophet will only come and excite you. The Lord said, So they see, so they see. Da, 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 so the seed, the heaven is open for you. Your bank account is floating. Your bank account, you go and look at your bank account. Your bank account is negative. You did not walk into that bank account. You don't walk and put money there. It's going to be empty. Waiting for miracle money. And you are saying amen, amen, amen to a shrine. And you expect your axe edge to come out. The axe stick is you. Today, you are going into deep of your destiny to get back what belongs to you. Hey! You are going back to the enemy's camp. That water was the enemy's camp. The water was a, an enemy to the children of the prophets. And they went and lost their axe edge in there. As soon as their axe edge was lost. Do you know the, the things that would have happened? That will happen when your axe edge is lost. Number one. What your, number one. The axe head is the most needed tool. The axe head was really needed for them to build the house. Because it is missing, there is no way they can complete the, the, the building of that house. Meaning, mission is being aborted in the middle of the vision. That means... The destiny has been slowed down. When your axe edge is missing, you cannot complete what you wanted to do. The house that you wanted to build or the stick you wanted to cut, you cannot complete it because you miss your axe edge. 
in the middle of your project. I want somebody to pray and say, Oh God, let my axe head be recovered. Let my axe head be recovered. A X A. Let my axe head be recovered. Everything that will make me move to another level. Oh God, let it be recovered. Let my destiny be recovered. The destiny that I lost in the middle of darkness. Let it be recovered. Every destiny you lost in the middle of darkness. I command it to be recovered. In your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I said let it be recovered. Let your axe head be recovered. Everything you lost in the middle. In the middle of your destiny, I command it to be recovered in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know what it means for your axe head to be missing? That means your mission is not accomplished. You want to get married. In the middle of your marriage, you get divorced. You want to have children in your marriage. In the middle, when you get pregnant, you have abortion. You have miscarriage. In the big middle of your business, you cannot complete your business. Hey, do you know what it means to lose your ass head? In the middle of your project, you cannot complete it. It no matter how good you are, nobody wants to pay Patronize you. People are only seeing evil about you. Do you know what it means to lose your ass head? It means that in the middle, the time that you are supposed to enjoy your money, that is when you fall sick. I say today, you must recover your ass head. Your destiny must be recovered. Wherever you lost your ass head, I command it to recover. I command it to be recovered to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Losing of your axe edge. You lost your axe edge. When you are supposed to sit down and enjoy your children. When you are supposed to enjoy your children. Guess what happened to you? <laughs> when you are supposed to enjoy your children. That is when your children will be looking for somebody else. <laughs> you walk you walk, you cannot eat the fruit of your labor. Huh? I say today, you will eat the fruit of your labor. Huh? Everything you have ever worked for, huh? that you never benefited from. Huh? From today, you are going to benefit from the fruit of your labor. Huh? Everything that you have ever worked for, huh? you are going to take less effort now huh? to recover it back. Huh? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, huh? I say pursue. Huh? I want somebody to say, I shall pursue. Huh? And when I shall pursue, huh? I will overtake her. And when I overtake her, I will recover all that the Lord, all that the enemy have stolen from me in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rabba Koshila. How many people wants to recover their axe egg edge today? How many people wants to recover their axe edge today? As you are, as you are saying me, you are getting your recovery. Everything that you have ever lost in your life. Everything they have ever stolen in your hands. Maybe as a result of false prophets. As a result of going to the wrong church. As a result of meeting with the wrong people. Today, as a result of meeting with wrong friends. Today, it is being recovered. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say, you are being recovered. Your axe head is being recovered today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say, your axe head is being recovered today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say, recovered. Be recovered. Be recovered. Be recovered. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Malaba Rakase Keleboha Marigaba Kushe Keleboha 
There is somebody here. I just got this message in the spirit realm. There is somebody here. You are going to hear a bad news. Don't be shaken. You are going to, they are going to call you and give you a bad news. A news. Don't be shaken. Because God is in control. Do not be shaken. Because if you are shaken, it's going to affect you that you will not be able to recover yourself. I release healing in your every aspect of your life. Healing in every aspect of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release healing, 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 healing in every aspect. Healing in your finances, healing in your career, healing in your ministry, healing in your health, healing in your marriage, healing in your life of your children, healing in every aspect of your life, healing in your projects, healing in, in your job, healing in your business, healing in everything that you want to do. I speak healing. Be recovered. Let there be recovery in every aspect of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Recovering myself. Recovering myself. Recovering myself. I want you to begin to pray and say, Oh God, let me get myself back. Let me, let me get myself back. Let me get myself back. Let me recover myself back. Say, I want you to say, Oh God, let me recover myself back. Huh? I cannot take it anymore. Huh? Let me recover myself. Let the axe aid. Huh? Let it be recovered huh? in the name of Jesus Christ. Marike de boshi gile baha. Maraka kaboshi kile de boshi la baha. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, the Lord of Lords. Father Lord, for as many people that have been having evil dreams, those that have been having evil dreams, oh God, I command those dreams to cease now. From today, they have recovered themselves. You that evil projected dreams that has been chasing this one. Who is that person? There is somebody here. They have been projecting evil dreams to you. One of the dreams that you used to dream is you see yourself in Africa, but you are not in, you are not living in Africa. There is somebody here that one of the dreams that you used to dream, you always see snake. Hmm. I speak into your life. If you are the one, I speak into your life. Let that evil dream cease in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father Lord, I thank you for this ministration and I know that you have done something in the life of this one. I want you to complete, go to where they are right now, complete this finished work on the cross of Calvary. Complete and grant them their recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of them, they will get their recovery today. Some of them is going to be tomorrow. So, but within these 30 days, oh God, of this program, Father Lord, I want you to grant them their recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your good God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
and this is the platform of heal the world god's power in action tomorrow i'm going to come out here and do some prophetic declaration into your life i'm going to do some prophetic declaration in your life tomorrow um um and i'm um I'm going to also come to the platform of incomplete or imperfect units. We are going to meet there tomorrow. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. Um, I'm going to stop here because I need to do a lot of prayers. I need to do a lot of prayers after this. Uh, I'm going to stop here for now. And I bless all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. This is the platform of Heal the World, God's Power in Action. And my name is Reverend Dr. Eunice Otuekon. Please, if you have not yet followed this, uh, my platform, my fan page platform, please go on Facebook and type in Heal the World, God's Power in Action. It's like the page and start following so that you can have notification. And I see that Facebook is messing with my with my page and i'm going to find out why they are doing that because lately page facebook has been sending me some kind messages people are flagging my messages to them and all of that i don't people don't see my notification and a lot of people they they have been sending me message woman of god i don't see you online anymore i am like i come online every time I almost every day now I come online, but people are not getting my notification. And that is why you see people are not coming to hear the word of God. So whatever Facebook is trying to do, whatever any agent of the devil is trying to do to for this message, for the gospel, good news of God, not to reach out to people, it shall be terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. And whoever is taking it as a point of duty to flag my messages, to flag my messages, let the power of God go and locate that person. Go and locate that person and strike his evil deeds is or are evil deeds in the name of jesus christ amen um by your i think i'm going to call you tonight by your i think that's gonna be your morning since we are in germany and if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, ministration or counseling with me you can send me a message send me a message and i'm also there are yesterday and today the people that are just coming on this platform for the first time, I'm going to also send you messages. I will go back to the message and send you messages. You know, you are all welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. You are all welcome for the newcomers. I welcome you all. I want you guys to, you know, congratulate the newcomers because I see a lot of... Okay, Malcolm Green. All right, all right, Malcolm, send me a message. So, um, for the newcomers, I'm going to, um, uh, can somebody congratulate them? Congratulate them, congratulate them. You know, um, I, I really, my heart is broken for the body of Christ. Okay, Bayo, I will call you a messenger. That is where I always call, anyways. My heart is broken for the body of christ please can you everybody start praying for the body of christ this is not a joke the kingdom of darkness is fighting against the body of christ this is serious is serious and the kingdom of darkness they are planting they are planting their agents in all the strategic parts of the church of god they plant their agents in the fivefold ministry among the pastors. They plant their agents among the uh, singers. They plant their agents among the ushers, the prayer warriors. Where are we going to? Please, let's pray for the body of Christ. Doris Ngwai, God bless you. Can somebody congratulate um, uh, uh, Doris? Welcome her. Can somebody welcome her onto this platform? Doris, you are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray for the body of Christ. Some people are like, oh, it is shameful. This is shameful to the body of Christ. It is not shameful to the body of Christ. Because if these people are not exposed, if they are not being exposed, guess what? 
the end time is here and do you, you and you let me tell you it, indirectly you are worshiping an idol worshiping you are always finding yourself bowing down to a shrine you are going to hellfire let me tell you it's not only the pastors that that are worshiping the devil the false prophet that will go to hellfire even you that is following them the bible says if though for those people that were with me yesterday the bible says that the false prophet will go to hellfire including their followers including the followers of false prophets they will also go to the uh, hellfire so why wouldn't people say so it's better that people begin to say it out so that people will be people will be free i'm really bleeding i'm i'm really crying for the body of christ oh god god deliver your children they don't know deliver them so i want everybody to say after me uh, who, who is that person that wants to give his or her life to christ if you want to give your life to christ can you comment and say i want to give my life to christ because i'm not going to end this message without leading somebody to christ i know that i've preached christ for you and you have you know you know accepted the message but i want to know if you want to give your life to christ specifically can you comment and say i want to give my life to christ so i can lead you to christ I can lead you through confessional prayer to Christ. Okay. Hallelujah. But there are people that are going to watch this video later. I'm going to do this confessional prayer. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you with a broken and a contrite heart. I have sinned against thee. I'm not worthy of calling your name. Please forgive me my sins. Those things you ask me not to do, I do them. The things you ask me to do, I cannot do. Father Lord, forgive me. In your favor, O God, have mercy upon me. Cast me not away from your presence, O God. Take not your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And renew the right spirit within me. Amen. Amen. I want somebody to say congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Hallelujah. You are welcome into the fold of the body of Christ. God bless you. Please stay connected on this platform. Stay connected, stay connected, stay connected. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to leave you guys. I want everybody to say after me, I have a future that cannot be fractured because it is structured by the scripture. I have divinity in my mentality. I am a general to my generation. I am a general to my generation. Thank you. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Mwah. Bye.